Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm Zia Scarabal from ZK Research, and I'm here at the Splunk.conf event, which is Splunk's user event. I'm with Mike Horn, SVP and GM of Splunk Security. Uh, Mike, first time on with me, so uh, glad to have you, but maybe a quick bio on yourself sure. and your role at Splunk. Great, yeah. So I've been in security a long time. Um, have been working in uh, security operations for most of that time. I've done a few startups and then um, was acquired into Splunk from a company called Twinwave. And then uh, obviously Splunk was acquired by Cisco back in uh, 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 2024. So uh, it's been quite the, quite the journey. So I'm responsible at Splunk here for all of our security products. So that's um, our uh, SIM, our SOAR, our behavioral analytics, um, uh, you know, our threat analysis. So all the things that we build and also some of the, the free applications that I've been here uh, almost three years. Yeah, that's a lot of security products, too. So yeah, well, hey, Cisco has more. So <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, we've got we're we're coming into the, the you know it's really exciting about what's happening with uh, bringing these things together. Yeah, so it's been a little over a year since the deal's closed, uh, maybe a year and a bit. Mm -hmm. And uh, so talk first about that, how that integration's gone. Um, you know, what's stayed the same, but what's changed, yeah. the, the broader integration with Cisco, and also how it's affected this event. Yeah, yeah, maybe let's start with this event. Um, for those that haven't been to a, a conf, it's a pretty unique event. Uh, you see people walking around in fezes, which is uh, part of what we call our Splunk Trust, which is people who have earned a certain level of status within the Splunk community. I need a fez. Um, uh, you need a fez. Yeah. Yeah, it takes a lot of work. It's not, <laughs> yeah. uh, not, 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 not something you can just ask for. Um, uh, so. Uh, yeah, so we have you know that part, and you know I, I guess I'd sum it up by saying we've really kept Splunk Splunky, right? Um, and so Conf is a good reflection of that. You see that in all the things that we're doing, but we're also taking advantage of the benefit of uh, Cisco and and everything that that brings. So I'm super excited about what's happening on the security product side, which I, I know we'll talk more about. Uh, but the integration's been great. Cisco's been you know really excited about investing in Splunk and making sure that Splunk is successful um, and continues to do. The good things that we've been doing. So it's been uh, overall great experience. Yeah, as a, an industry watcher and someone obviously who's followed Cisco a long time, uh, I know when the deal closed, a lot of people on the investor side thought, well, they paid $24 billion for foreign revenue, creative margin, pretty good deal cash wise. But uh, to me, what's been amazing is how fast you've st I've seen Splunk integrated into a lot of the other Cisco products, right? Yeah. So it's a big part of the observability story, a big part of the security story, a big part of the AI story. Yep. And so that, that, act, that integration actually has happened uh, for a company as big as Splunk and as big as Cisco uh, really almost, I, I couldn't imagine any faster. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I think it, it, it has been fast, but not too fast. Like, you know, it's yeah. uh, move fast, but um, uh, in this case, don't break too many things. And I think they've done a great job at, at pulling people in and, and really understanding, you know, the Splunk culture and how to, how to get the best of, of both worlds. And, you know, something I'm really proud about is post acquisition, you know, we've managed to really keep the Splunk growth engine going. We've added more and more um, net new customers through, you know, the relationships that we have on the expanded uh, field side from Cisco. And uh, so I think we're seeing a lot of the, the what was hoped for in, in the acquisition start to really play out in, in the results and, and what we're able to deliver. So it's been, been an exciting time. It's uh, certainly moved fast. All right, well, good. And uh, uh, there was a lot of news at this event mm -hmm. uh, this year. And uh, uh, in fact, uh, I thought a lot of it was great, revolved around AI and things like that. Uh, I thought maybe the lead item, and you may disagree with this, was just the evolution of the Splunk platform into the Cisco data platform, right? Yeah. So talk a little bit about that one. Yeah, yeah. so that's more than just a name, yeah. right? So, um, you know, when we think about what's happening in the environment and AI being such a, a big uh, force and, you know, disruptor in, in the market, you know, one of the things that we have a lot of experience in is machine data. And if you think about how a lot of the AI that exists today has been trained, well, it's been trained on text, you know, whether it's books mm -hmm. or, you know, Wikipedia or, you know, different articles or speech or movies, um, all those different things. But that's very different from the data set that you get from a, a server talking about how it's performing and what it's doing and application logs and all that. And so Splunk has a deep history and experience in that machine data um, learning. And that's what's at the core of this um, Cisco data platform an announcement is really how we're helping leverage our expertise in machine data 
and turning that into something that can power the AI era and help people, whether that's thinking about things like training um, all the way through, you know, um, uh, generative AI, um, you know, applications and, and use cases. So it's going to be a really fundamental thing. And, and, and don't let the name imply that it only works with Cisco, right? This is a uh, continuation of the, the kind of broad data platform that we've got in terms of uh, supporting lots of different vendors. So what I think is interesting about that is when you look at a lot of the AI momentum that Cisco has, mm -hmm. uh, obviously Chuck Robbins, CEO, talks about it in the earnings calls, most of that is AI infrastructure. Yep. But, um, and this is something I took away from a conversation I had with Mark Patterson, uh, now Cisco CFO, pre-close of Splunk, where if you look at the data Cisco has, which of course is Splunk, but also Thousand Eyes and telemetry yep. information and all that, the one could argue that Cisco has more infrastructure data, if you include Splunk, mm -hmm. than maybe any other vendor. Yeah. And so its ability to not just provide the infrastructure for AI, but also the data to train AI is pretty fascinating. Yeah, exactly. And so I think what you're seeing with yeah. Cisco Data Platform is a manifestation of what yeah. you were what you were um, observing, which is really, hey, you're in a unique position, um, Cisco, to be able to really bring some of these different capabilities into um, into the market and drive an, you know yeah. <laughs> drive that accelerated AI adoption and and bring some unique perspective to that. So yeah, that's it's, and it's the potential there is tremendous, and mm -hmm. so I'm excited to see where that goes. Absolutely. Yeah. Now there was other AI news, mm -hmm. right? There was the Agentic SOC. Yep. Uh, and, uh, uh, and so describe what that is. Yeah, so Agentic SOC is something that we think about is, you know, where the SOC is headed, um, where you have AI, whether that's assistants or agents, that are helping analysts perform, you know, actions where they can make better decisions faster, or those decisions are being made automatically for them. And so, you know, when we think about what does it take, well, we've got an AI assistant that helps, you know, if you're an analyst, you're investigating something. Well, what do you need to do? You need to sit and go back and forth and, and figure out, hey, <clears throat> go pull me this log, show me what connected to this IP address, et cetera. We have a triage agent that we announced that'll be coming out at the beginning of next year. That's um, around, how do I automatically perform those investigation actions for you? So while you're enjoying your coffee, you know, the AI agent is out doing that work on your behalf and figuring out, investigating all those alerts that are coming in. Uh, and then we also have, you know, things that help with threat analysis. So uh, we have a malware anal analysis uh, agent, and then we have a uh, SOAR playbook agent, which helps create automation playbooks. So we're starting to see, I think like many organizations, we're starting to see AI get fused across lots of yeah. different use cases, uh, all to make analysts' lives simpler, you know, make decisions faster, and automate as much of that as possible. Yeah, and to me, the SOC is one of the, traditionally, one of the hardest places to work if you're an engineer. I, uh, before I was an analyst, I was actually in corporate IT, and mm -hmm. uh, man, the, we had so much information, and this was a long time ago, I can't even imagine what it's like today. Yeah. In fact, one of the interesting data points in my research is that the SOC engineers I interviewed said about half of the alerts they get, they um, ignore is maybe not the right word, but yep. they can't get to, yep. right? And so if AI can just simply help them triage and understand what's important, yep. that alone is a huge win. Yeah, ab absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and giving you, um, you know, a here's a recommendation, this is a false positive, this is a true positive, and then giving you a confidence in that so you kind of know where to spend your, your time and energy. You're going to go look at the high confidence false positives and you're going to go look at the low confidence, uh, sorry, the high confidence true positives and the <laughs> low confidence uh, false positives, right? That's kind of where you can start to, to make sure that you're looking at the things that are going to have the biggest impact. Yeah, and I do think, I know some people are skeptical of this though, around the completely automated SOC. I do think we'll eventually get to that one day. Yep. Uh, obviously, there's this concept of, um, uh, you know, the, the time to trust. Yep. Uh, but to me, that'll, th that'll come pretty quickly. Now, uh, also uh, announced was the agentic AI-powered observability, and observability mm -hmm. is something that Splunk's been really good at over the years. And so what's the infusion of AI there? Yeah, so um, there's two things that are happening in observability. One is observability for AI, right? Um, so helping monitor AI yeah. systems and understand, hey, is your GPU infrastructure performing appropriately, LLMs, all these different things. And the other is um, AI for observability, meaning how do we leverage these same kinds of concepts that I was talking about in security? Well, the same problems apply when you think about observability, right? You have 
an, an application that's not performing properly. Well, how do I investigate and troubleshoot? You know, is that a memory problem? Is it an API gateway problem? Where does the problem live? Well, a, the um, AI for observability is going to help with uh, agents that do that work for you so that you get a running start. Or as you said, in the future, it'll just give you a high confidence decision and yeah. it'll do the work on your behalf. Like, hey, I need to reprovision another load balancer. I need to take this node offline because something's wrong. Um, those kinds of things can just happen automatically. Yeah, it makes you realize too when you start looking, thinking about this, like how many blind spots corporate IT had. Mm -hmm. And just and that's why troubleshooting has historically been so difficult because everyone had a little bit of a view uh, into their own domain. In fact, one of the terms that uh, has been bandied about um, that I never really liked was the whole concept of mean time to innocence because mm -hmm. it was really about punting the problem, saying yep. it's not my problem, it's somebody else's. But yep. to me, that's really the wrong way to solve the problem. It's about solving it, right? Yep. And, yeah. uh, and, and I think the observability plays a big role there. And that's an area where I think, again, from a Cisco perspective, integration with Thousand Eyes, integration mm -hmm. with the app dynamics, really has taken observability into a new realm where before we had silos of observability, but now there's really end to end. That, yeah, that's yeah. right. And um, you know, one of the things that comes out of a lot of the AI technology is this concept of knowledge graphs and being able to understand what are the relationships between different um, objects in in the in the data. And so, understanding the relationship between a server and the applications and the network and all the different pieces, as you're pointing out. You know, Cisco has a lot of really rich and interesting telemetry. We've, you know, Cisco with App Dynamics, we have really great, you know, three-tier application visibility and being able to to monitor and understand that. With the Splunk Observability Cloud, we have great, you know, service-oriented uh, microservice uh, type applications, cloud-native applications, and then with Thousand Eyes, you kind of get the how is everything working across the network and you know the digital experience management and and all those good things, and so. We've already seen a lot of convergence between App Dynamics and the Splunk Observability Cloud, both from a product perspective, the UIs, sign-on, all those kinds of things. And uh, I know a lot of the same work's happening on the Thousand Eyes side yeah. as well. I actually think that Splunk's played an interesting role in helping Cisco tie together a lot of its observability tools, because uh, I think if you had been tracking uh, App Dynamics, a lot of people scratch their heads and wonder why Cisco bought it, because mm -hmm. it was a little bit of a stray from you know, say thousand eyes, right, right, at the time. But but now with Splunk, it actually created that connectivity tissue between all these different observability tools. Yeah, I, I yeah, couldn't agree yeah, more, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, now another announcement was the Detection Studio based on the Snap Attack acquisition. Mm -hmm. And so what was Snap Attack and how yep. does Detection Studio work? Yeah, so Snap Attack was a really interesting company that was a startup that was helping service the uh, detection lifecycle management space. So it was a spin out of a group of uh, engineers that came out of Booz Allen Hamilton. They founded Snap Attack to um, uh, build out this technology and, and helps everything from initial detection discovery through tuning, um, detection validation, being able to audit, detection performance, you know, the whole spectrum of things. I was just in a meeting with a customer earlier um, before this, and you know, one of the things they were talking about is some of the things that they, they really want and uh, being able to, to have more uh, advanced uh, detection capabilities. And so Detection Studio is designed to address those needs. Uh, we're super excited. It's going to be integrated as part of enterprise security. Mm -hmm. So if you're a customer of enterprise security, um, there'll be a, a, a set of capabilities that will get layered in there. And then you know, one of the announcements that we made this week is uh, Enterprise Security 8.2 is officially available, so that's a, that was a big release for us. And with Enterprise Security 8.2, there's actually two flavors of Enterprise Security now that customers can choose from. We have our Enterprise Security Essentials, which is Enterprise Security that people have been using today, um, the thing that they already know and love. And then we created a new Enterprise Security Premier Edition, which is another layer on top of that, which adds a SOAR license and adds this mm -hmm. new UEBA capability that's natively integrated into using Splunk data and using the Splunk ES UI for all the investigation activities and everything else that happens in that, um, that space. So really exciting times for us. Yeah, and, uh, and SOAR is interesting too, because I think that's come along with AI, mm -hmm. right? And so uh, just a little bit of where you predict uh, 
Sim and Sora to go and did yeah. these things eventually come together? Yeah, I think yeah, yeah. I think what we've done with um, ES8 and and beyond is really fusing those things together yeah. to say, hey, you know, Sim and Sora, they're kind of uh, peanut butter and jelly. You know, pick your pick your favorite analogy there. Um, but automation, you know, some people will say, hey, do you still need automation when we have AI? And and you know, another customer conversation I was having today is there's some things where you want very deterministic behavior. If you're going to turn off you know, a user's access to the internet or you're going to disable a user's account, well, you want to do that the same way every single yeah. time, right? That's where SOAR and automation comes into play. You don't want the AI to decide, how am I going to do, uh, you know, disable a user's account today, right? You don't want any creativity in that, um, uh, in that workflow. And so, you know, I see these things as being extremely complementary where AI is applies reasoning and has more um, ability to to come up with different you know uh, out external paths right things that weren't um, down the down the fairway so to speak these edge cases is the word I was looking for um, so being able to deal with edge cases and then um, you know uh, having soar be the hey I know exactly what I want to do and how I want to do it and I want to you know code that up and have that be very deterministic so I think they're very complementary over time good good uh, all right and any other uh, announcements what you want to call them? No, I think, uh, you know, yeah. exciting time. There's been a ton of yeah. uh, advancements and, and we're, you know, excited to be part of Cisco. I think maybe, maybe something to talk about is uh, we've done a lot of integration with Cisco. So that's everything from Talos Threat Intel showing up in uh, enterprise security and our SOAR and our Splunk Attack Analyzer. Um, we have lots of product integrations through the Cisco Security Cloud application. Um, uh, and we've done a lot of work with the teams on things like XDR and, and others. Mm -hmm. So tons of integration happening, a lot more announcements to come, and uh, I think uh, we're just getting started. Yeah, no, in, in, uh, in a year, a little over a year, that's been a tremendous number of innovations. In fact, I was at the uh, NRF show in January and I saw some Splunk integration into the retail dashboard that was used to help retailers understand what was going on with their business. And yeah. So it's everything from that, to, uh, uh, as you mentioned, to observability, the security, and there's just been a great, tremendous amount of innovation. Yeah, and now we're so, pulling it all together yeah. under the uh, Cisco data platform umbrella, so it's uh, exciting times. Yeah, well, it, it's interesting too that the, the deal happened just as AI started to come into its own, mm -hmm. and so I don't, it's hard for me to imagine that the, when this deal was first initiated, that everybody had thought we'd be in this AI wave we're in now, but mm -hmm. it certainly was well-timed. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so uh, if I were to wrap this up, better integration with Cisco, it's improved the security products, tight integration there, as well as observability, but the important thing for Splunk users is Splunk still Splunky. That's right, there you go, thanks. So, Thanks, so from .com, on behalf of Mike Horn from Splunk, I'm Zia Scaraval from ZK Research, and thanks for watching. Uh, give us a like and hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on my next episode of Zcast.